Good morning, Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We welcome you to the sunrise service from the edge of Broad Creek to celebrate the power of the Lord Jesus Christ over death. We bless him in Jesus' name. Would you please join me in welcoming Victoria Pavernik to speak to us from the edge of Broad Creek as we bring you this Resurrection Sunday morning service. Good morning. I am so excited to just be able to celebrate Jesus and all that he's done on the cross. Um, I've been just spending so much time thinking about his goodness and everything that he's accomplished on the cross is just the power of God for those who believe. And it just excites me that God would send his son out of love so that we could have a new life and one that's completely empowered by his Holy Spirit and in complete union with him and this morning I just before like we get into any ministry I just kind of wanted to share some things that the Lord was showing to me through scripture uh, just about Paul's encounter with Jesus and then what he realized about the death and resurrection of the cross um, so if you just take a look at Acts 9 there's um, the encounter that uh, Saul had with the resurrected Lord Jesus. So just imagine, you know, the story goes like Saul was using threats and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers and, um, you know, so he's going around basically persecuting the Church of Christ. And then it says um, in Acts 9-3, as he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand of Damascus and he remained there blind for three days and did not eat and drink. So this is his encounter with the resurrected Lord, you know. This is Saul living this self-righteous life, thinking that he's following God's way of living by enforcing God's laws, making other people that are saying anything different and contrary to try to do what he was doing. But if you look at his life, that is not the heart of the law of God, to go around pretty much murderous, trying to kill people, <laughs> just for the, you know, for a righteous living. And you know, a lot of times, like, we could even get zealous in our own ways like Saul and just think we're doing the right thing, right? And, like, it's totally not God's heart. So it's, it's like, we gotta put ourselves in this man's shoes. Like, this is a man who's like, I'm really living for God. And then God's like, nope. And this is what's so great about it. He uses the resurrected Lord to come and encounter him and speak to him with tender mercy and gentleness. And is like, why are you persecuting me? He could have just, like, he did strike him down on his knees, you know. But, like, he could have done so much worse, right? Because he was, like, killing off, having Christians killed, like, his people, Jesus' people. And... Instead, he's like, no, like, stop, I'm real, I'm alive, this is a truth, like, the resurrection was real, and to, to show it, he blinded him for three days, like, the power of God hit him, he, there is nothing he could do about it, he was completely out of, like, his own control, and from that day on, Saul knew, Jesus, the risen Lord, is real, and he just immediately started preaching the gospel, which is like pretty awesome that it was like such an instant change for him. One encounter with, with the risen Lord and like Saul was never the same. He was totally a full on believer of Jesus. And that's the kind of thing that if we haven't had that encounter yet, like, or we know someone that hasn't had that encounter, we need to pray for it, you know, Lord. If you can encounter this man who is completely against you, can you encounter me? I want to experience the risen Lord. You know, if and if you know somebody that hasn't, just pray over them by name. Speak life 
you know, into them. God, encounter them with your resurrected power because you are alive. You know, you are not a dead God who is just <laughs> somewhere far away and distant from us, but you encounter people every single day. God encountered me when I was in a coma in my, like, drug-addicted state. I had no hope for living, no reason for an encounter. I wasn't even, like, really looking for God. I was just looking to just be oblivious to life, party really hard, and... And God, you know, I put myself in a coma using too many drugs. And he came to me and revealed himself to me. And like, you know, it's like, why? He didn't have to do that. I was out to kill myself pretty much. <laughs> and like he did anyway, because he loves us. And that's the love of Jesus, you know, the, the heart behind God, the Father. He wishes that none would perish that all would have eternal life. So Saul came to this revelation that basically, like, in that moment of encounter, like, the way I had been living was not okay. Like, I had been depending on my own righteousness. I had been relying on my actions to make me right with the Lord. And Jesus, in one moment, completely changes his mind to realize that he is not at all <laughs> living the right way, but he needs Jesus to do that he needs Jesus to make him right with God and in that revelation we see the the fullness of the cross of Christ this is what it is you know um, in Philippians 3 3 Paul says this for we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised we rely on what Christ has done for us we put no confidence in human effort though I could have confidence in my own effort if anyone could Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. And he lists all the reasons why he obeyed the law without fault, in summary. <laughs> you know, and he had so many reasons. But then his, his confession is, I rely on the cross of Christ. Not my own human effort, not my self-confidence, you know, nothing at all except for the cross of Christ. And, and why did he do that? Like, why was he able to confess this? Uh, this is what he understood about the cross of Christ. Ultimately, it was his freedom from spiritual bondage, from sin. It gave him a new life. He was empowered, you know, by God to live, like, as a new man, completely forgiven, healed, restored, and have eternal life with God. Um, a few things about the cross of Christ in general. Like, let's just think about what the cross of Christ accomplished for everybody for a minute here. The first thing that, right before Jesus actually went to die on the cross, um, in John chapter 12, he told his disciples the, the vo um, and the people that were listening there, The voice was for your benefit, not mine. This is John 12, 30 uh, through 33. The time for judging this world has come, when Satan, the ruler of this world, would be cast out. And when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. So at that moment, like before he was going to be crucified, one thing he revealed about like his death on the cross was that Satan was going to be defeated. What, you know, And this was going to be the way that he draws all men to himself. He basically took away the power and all the strongholds that Satan had on mankind's life through the cross of Christ. Like, even today, we, we face temptation to sin. You know, there is a spiritual war going on that we're not aware of. Most of us are blind to it, yet we follow, like, the lead of demonic presence and things like that. But the reality is the cross of Christ has defeated Satan, and he has no power over you. <laughs> you see, so this is like, if we catch this revelation, the cross of Christ defeated the power of every strong like demonic stronghold in our life whether it's fear anxiety depression you know self-hatred any kind of bondage addiction like that satan wants to put on your life he has defeated that through the cross of christ when you believe in the cross of christ it is when he said it is finished it's finished you are free from the power of satan and it's just in that moment that you can get, like, that moment of your faith alone. Nothing else. Just like Paul was saying, I didn't rely on myself anymore. 
This is the power of the cross of Christ. He defeated Satan in my life. You know, it was um, the cross of Christ was also the atonement for all of our sins. It's just some like you know theological facts out there. He's like Jesus was our substitution for what we should have done. We should have borne the penalties of our sin. He paid the ransom. Meaning he set us free from the power of Satan. He redeemed us from the curse of the law where we were declared guilty. We're no longer guilty anymore. But now we can live lives that are free and pleasing to God. He took, he was the, like, hit the cross of Christ is the appropriation, uh, propitiation of our sins. So every offense against God that we have ever had is completely wiped out. No longer is God offended by us because of the cross of Christ. When he looks at us, he looks at us as somebody that is just like with love no offense you know when people make you mad it's like you're offended it's, you know they were wrong and God knows we're wrong but he doesn't even look at it like that <laughs> he's like I'm not offended because of Jesus and when we realize that it's like man how is God so unoffendable and that's the love of God he's just so loving that way and we've been reconciled. Now we have a relationship. We can have relationship with God. We can have intimacy with the Lord. We can have that. And we're justified. So every demand of the law has been met through Jesus. Paul understood all of these things. He lived in freedom and boldness. And he went and preached the gospel. And, you know, signs and wonders followed him. Which is something else that the cross of Christ does for us. It heals our body, soul, and spirit. We no longer have to like live without hope of being healed in our minds in our soul like our physical body can be healed because of the cross of christ it says in isaiah 53 he was pierced for our rebellion crushed for our sins he was beaten so we could be made whole he was whipped so we could be healed so this is our hope the hope of our full healing okay we have to believe this because if we if we waver in our faith you know it's really hard like it's hard to trust God over suffering and pain, or emotional pain, physical pain, but when we press into the cross of Christ, we see when Jesus started his ministry, I mean, he traveled around teaching the synagogues, announcing this good news about the kingdom, and he healed every kind of disease and sickness. You know, the news about him spread, people began bringing people to him that were sick, and whatever their sickness or disease was, you know, if they were demon possessed, or epileptic, or paralyzed, he healed them all. This is the heart of God. We have to trust God to heal our body. Even if you are listening right now and you have sickness in your body, ask the Lord, Lord Jesus, by your stripes I am healed. I confess my faith in this. You know, and just speak to your sickness and tell it to go in the name of Jesus and see what happens. Because I believe that the Lord wants to touch your body and heal your body, your sickness, your mind. He wants to destroy any work of Satan on your soul, your emotions, and your physical body in Jesus' name. We have to remember that the last enemy that God puts under his feet is death. So even though Jesus rose from the dead and this means our resurrection, you know, there is going to be a day when death is completely defeated and we will all live, you know, forever eternally. And that's, you know, that's what's awesome. So uh, eternal life is another promise of the cross. <laughs> When we die, we will live. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. Do you believe this? That's what he asked the people. You know, do you believe this? This is what we have to believe. This is the resurrection. This is what we celebrate on Easter. That the power of the living Christ is living in me now. And now because of that, I'm raised to a new life. Like a new life. I'm a new creation. I'm not the same person anymore. I can be a child of God. My identity has changed. I can live in God's ways. I can have His power. I can be His friend because I'm forgiven. I'm loved. I'm accepted into the beloved. And I can live life together with the Holy Spirit. That is like life with the Holy Spirit is the best. <laughs> and that was such a promise of like this is part of the salvation promise. It was a deposit. Like, you believe in Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit, and it's like life is never the same. It's just this beautiful adventure. And the coolest thing is, <clears throat> is that this, the power, it says in Romans 8, 11, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. 
And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give you life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. So just to kind of wrap up this whole thing about Paul, like um, in Philippians 3, 7, this is what he said, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ, for God's way of making us right with him depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus has first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. <clears throat> I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. So, you know, it then says, if you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. He was so confident in this, but we must hold on to the progress that we already made. Think about this. Now, this is his desire. Like, out of everything, I want to know Christ. You know, I want to, like, share in his suffering know his res the power of his resurrection and <clears throat> like that was the fruit of the forgiveness of his sins he's he's like i'm going to lay my life down for the gospel and all i want to know is jesus i want to be one with him i want to experience him i want that relationship with him i want to live every single day of my life for him whether that looks like practical like practically living for him doing what he says to do just like he did he listened to the father you know and he did what the father showed him to do that is what it meant for paul but it also meant spending time with him getting to know him being with him and then just laying down his life i mean he was beaten and all kinds of things he's, he's like shipwrecked and he didn't care he did it for the gospel and are we willing to lay down our lives just like jesus laid down his life you know, is the God, does the gospel bring that much power to us that we're willing to lay down our lives to know Christ, to gain him, to be one with him in his death and resurrection and believe that we will rise from the dead, you know, like regardless of what we experience, what we suffer on earth for the gospel. This is the way that Paul is exhorting us really to live through his own testimony. And I just want to encourage anyone who believes in Jesus to just think of the goodness and the power of the death like and resurrection of Christ in your life how he's forgiven you how he's loved you how he's met you how he's healed you how he's restored you and just let that truth those truths empower you to love God with all your heart mind soul and strength and to lay down your life for the gospel there are so many people that need to hear the gospel I like it's just no one shared the gospel with me. God had to encounter me personally. Like, but we have mouths. We can do this. This is something too good not to share. And you know, this Easter Sunday, just just meditate on God's power in your life. If you're feeling defeated, like if there's any sense of like I'm not living up to the way that God wants me to live, remember this is not your righteousness. You know, nothing that you do <laughs> can make you right with God. He did it all already, and just. Accept that grace and live for him. Love him. Pour out your heart for him and allow the power of the resurrected Christ to heal you, to change you, to shape your mind, your way of thinking, and to just set you free from just any bondage that you may be suffering so that you may go forward and live boldly for the gospel. Wonderful word we've heard from Victoria Pervarnik. What a great lady of God encountered God in her hospital bed about to die maybe that's where you are right now we just release to you the gift of the holy spirit god's power in your life say jesus save me jesus help me jesus heal me we believe you'll come into your room where you are this resurrection sunday it's the day that god demonstrated power over death for all of us we give thanks to him
for His goodness to us. Wherever you're watching around the world, we're so glad that you found this live stream, uh, this video, and we encourage you to write to us and ask us more. If you'd like to know more, we'll be, have people ready to talk to you and encourage you to know Jesus as your Savior. We release His power into your life today. We celebrate not any shame on the cross, but the honor of God yes, to have victory over sin and to set us free uh, from the life of sin that uh, so many of us have been caught in, whether it's in drugs, alcohol, whatever it is that you're in bondage to, pornography, whatever it is, there's hope for you, there's help for you. We release it to you today. Thank you for joining us on the stream today. Uh, please feel free to share it with some friends and let's get the good news out that you can live a life, a new life in Jesus because of his victory on the cross. God bless you and thank you for joining us today on this live stream.